is up? You're in Hannah's Kitchen today and I am cooking up some delicious food. So today on the menu, we have fajita chicken made in the actor fryer and some cauliflower pizza. So I'll show you how I did my chicken. So this is the chicken. It is so good. I literally just put in half a tablespoon of grapeseed oil and then I covered it with this fajita 25% less sodium. It is so good. And it was in the air fryer for about 20, 25 minutes-ish. It's so good. So next up, I also cooked some cauliflower pizza, so it should be ready really soon. I'm so excited. I love cauliflower pizza. Oh, I'll show you the box too. I know I get asked this sometimes what box it is, because they're all a little bit different. Um, if you do buy it at a store like Domino's or Pizza Pizza, um, those places, those restaurants usually are quite higher in calories for some reason than if you were to buy it from a box. So I'll show you what this one is. It is the Montelli cauliflower with four cheese. I think I bought this at an organic food store. But honestly, all of them are really good and the macros on it is amazing. Okay, pizza's done. And for veggies, I'm honestly the laziest person right now. So I actually just have a tray of vegetables that I'll have on the side with it. And then later tonight, I do have kale um, that I could make into a salad, but I'm feeling a little bit of a crunch with the pizza and the chicken. So I'll probably have it with carrots, broccoli, and cauliflower. So I just had a slice and it is so good, you guys. It's so good. And the reason why I chose this cauliflower pizza is because let's say you're gonna have half the box. So half the box for one third is 260 calories. So if I wanna have, let's say half the pizza, if you look here, then half the pizza is gonna be roughly around 320 calories. So it's pretty big of a difference in comparison to like a domino slice of pizza, which is probably around 320 calories um, for one slice. And you're probably not just gonna have one, you'll probably have something like four slices or five slices, which could be easily around 1500 or 1000 to 1500 calories. So in terms of pizza, if you are craving a pizza, try and get the cauliflower pizza or you can make your own as well with cauliflower crust and it is super delicious i also topped it with red hot chili flakes for that nice spicy kick oh oh hi leo <laughs> I am so tired, oh my gosh, it's about 8.30 on Saturday night. I just gotta move this so there's no shadow. <sighs> yeah, it's about 8.30 on Saturday night and I just got back from the gym. For the past about a week or so, I have been feeling really dizzy, really spinny, and I have seen five doctors to try and get this whole thing figured out and I finally think I got it figured out. Um, it is my left ear that, no, I don't want the shadow. <laughs> oh, I am exhausted. I just had a shower and I put my hair into French braids so that I can have nice waves in the morning. Um, I just had an awesome workout and decided to film a video because it's Saturday night. I'm not going out, I'm staying in. That's usually what I do, by the way, is stay in on weekends. About uh, five years ago, I would be out every single weekend going to all the clubs and the parties and all that is fun, but um, I feel like you reach a point where you're content with staying at home too. So I'm kind of turned into a little bit of a homebody now, but I wanted to do a video today on bloating and I know this is something that everyone experiences sometimes and we'll get right into it. 
I was gonna film the whole video here because I'm super comfy, but I think I'm going to switch locations. Hold up. So today I really wanted to talk about bloating. I know this is something that I think everyone experiences, maybe more so than others, but I think this is a really good topic, really relatable, and something that if you just take the time and the practice, I think you can really try and lessen the bloating through these tips. So I'll put a chart right up here and one of the first things is do you have to poop? And if the answer is yes, that's probably why you're bloated. And if you don't have to poop, then the next question is are you on your period? If you're a female, it is completely normal to experience some water retention from having your period. I know myself and my clients, I get very bloated on my period just from all the water retention. And a lot of my clients too will actually gain anywhere up from five to 10 pounds on their period. And as soon as they're off their period, they immediately lose all that added weight within a couple days. So don't worry about it, it's completely normal. Don't even stress, just move on. If you are not on your period, the next question is, did you eat recently? Then if the answer is yes, then your body is probably just trying to digest all the food you ate. Try and pick a food item that isn't so heavy on your digestive system. Move on, you're not fat, you have nothing to worry about. But if you find you're constantly bloated throughout the day, you find you're constantly have this inflammation in your stomach, then it could be because you're stressed. And when we're stressed, our body again goes into fight or flight mode and immediately retains your fat because it's under stress. It doesn't know what's going on, right? So it immediately holds on to it and is saving that for storage. I know it sucks, but our bodies really, really know us and try to eliminate all stress, people, places, things, reduce the stress, cut it out and move on. But if you're not stressed, it could be because you have over eight. And this is something that I've experienced before. If I go out, let's say I eat pizza and ice cream, burgers, let's say I just go to the Mandarin and go all out, I am gonna be so bloated, go into carb coma. But this is because I just ate, I simply just ate way too many calories. And I know this is, it's Thanksgiving this weekend here in Canada. I know it's definitely a time where many of us go into carb coma. It's normal, just get right back on track. That is the biggest thing because if you let this bloating that you experience one day turn into a couple days, then that is when you wanna be careful and you don't want it to turn into fat. So get back on your training programs and your meal plans and you'll feel so much better. But if this is something that does continue for a couple days and you feel like you're constantly bloated, then you're probably just eating way too many calories. And the biggest thing is knowing which foods cause bloating. Okay, so I know for me, it is 100% dairy. If I have dairy, I feel so bloated. I could have under eight that day. I could have just had dairy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it would literally look like I went to the Mandarin, the keg, and every single restaurant you could possibly think of and consume like 20,000 calories because my body just does not digest dairy well. So know what certain foods you don't digest with. It could be meat, it could be soy, it could be protein powders, it could be anything. Just be aware, be conscious of which foods are causing you that bloating. And besides that, if you know which foods cause you bloating or maybe there aren't any and you just find you're over consuming on calories, over consuming on the wrong types of foods, then it is probably fat. So if it's something that you do want to eliminate altogether, then I'm gonna give you a couple tips right here. So tip number one, ladies, we have two different types of fats. We have omega-3 and omega-6 fats. And omega-3 fats are good fats. They help to lower inflammation, which is what we want. So omega-3 fats are things like fish oil, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, tahini. Tahini is delicious on salads. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Walnuts, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. I think that's it. 
all and dark leafy greens so these are all the foods that are great and in lowering inflammation helping our digestive system out and just getting rid of all the toxins and waste so omega-3 are good fats now omega-6 fats on the other hand are things like sunflower oil, canola oil, cottonseed, margarine, or any type of vegetable oils that you see at the store. And vegetable oils is something that is in pretty much any packaged food that you can think of, unless they've added different oils, which would say on the box. But I'm going to say that probably about 99% of packaged foods that are found in such things as Twinkies and crackers, cookies, and any sort of cereal box, they're going to have these vegetable oils, which lead to bloating and inflammation. And everybody's bodies are different. So you know, one girl that you see on Instagram might be okay with eating these foods and not feel bloating. But if you find that right now you're experiencing bloating after eating these foods, then you might want to cut them out and eat something a little bit more on the omega-3 side and cut out these fats from your diet. Other omega-6, other omega-6 foods are things like fried chicken, fries, tempura, all these different types of foods. So if you find that you're eating a lot of packaged foods, fried foods, creamy foods, then ladies, this is really high in omega-6. Ultimately, it leads to bloating and added inflammation. You do want to have a balance of omega-3 to omega-6. And right now in our day, I think the omega-6 is all the way up here and omega-3 is down here. So we want to make sure that we increase our omega-3 fats to help with inflammation and bloating. My next tip, when we have inflammation, when we have bloating, chances are we my phone just went off. <laughs> chances are we are also very tired. So if you find you're extremely tired in the day, you find you have absolutely no energy, it's probably from the food that you're eating. So we want to have more alkaline foods and less acidic foods. So alkaline foods are things like pretty much any vegetable you can think of, any sort of green vegetable or root vegetable, any sort of fruit, gluten-free grains like quinoa, brown rice, still cut oats, gluten-free oats, apple cider vinegar, nuts, ginger, and turmeric. So all of these foods are very high and alkaline, giving you that super boost in energy. However, if you're eating more acidic foods like meat, fish, poultry, dairy, any sort of processed foods like chips or protein bars, candy, all these foods are so acidic, which also could leave you very bloated. So turn up the alkaline, turn up the omega-3, and turn down the omega-6 and the highly acidic foods. And I promise you ladies, you will feel so amazing. Oh, hi, Leo. <laughs> My dog just traveled so far to see me. Hi, baby. And my dog just came to be in this video. Okay. And another acidic food, ladies, is coffee. I know this is something that I used to be obsessed with. I would probably have anywhere from four to five coffees a day. Sorry, my phone just went off. And that your body is trying to tell you that it's under a lot of stress, it needs more sleep, and it needs more alkaline foods and less acidic foods. So I have been almost caffeine free for an entire week now. I think there was one day I had maybe this amount of coffee, like an extra small cup, but I have been almost caffeine free for the entire week. I just cut it out cold turkey. I could make another video on this, but cutting out cold turkey is definitely hard. You have to make sure you're getting enough sleep in and you're improving your vegetables, reducing stress. All of these things do help in making sure that you're just getting rid of all the toxins and acidity in your body. And my energy has been quite good. Like it's 9, 9.30 now and 
I'm feeling still pretty energized and I wake up really energized too. So the video is all done. Please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And if you would like me to do any sort of specific topics, please let me know. I am almost done doing my room. So that is something I want to show you like an apartment room. It's not an apartment, but you know what I mean? Some sort of a room tour, but I think that would be really cool. And let me know what you loved about this video too, because I love hearing what you guys have to say. And make sure you follow me on Instagram at Hannah J. McCray.